All right, so we are going to do section three of AMC 2019, question 21 to 25. Now this is section three, and these five questions are a little bit more difficult than the previous questions, so be ready for a little bit more uh, working out and detailed solution, because these are five marks each. All right, uh, so let's start reading the question. Question number 21. In my dance class, 14 students are taller than Bob and 12 are shorter than Alice. Four students are both shorter than Alice and taller than Bob. How many students are in my dance class? So there are two children we know, Bob and Alice, and we don't know who is taller, who is shorter, but let's, if we arrange them in ascending order of height, so this is how it's going to look at. So we are going to work out in this scenario that they're all arranged in ascending order. So let's see B for Bob. And as if we know that 14 students are taller than Bob, so that means in the queue, 14 students would be standing after Bob because they are standing in ascending order of height. And now let's look for Alice. There are 12 children shorter than Alice. So if this is Alice, there are 12 children who are before Alice in the queue. So till now we don't know who who is taller, who is shorter amongst Alice and Bob. But if you read the next part carefully, four students are both shorter than Alice and taller than Bob. So think about it carefully. So these four students are shorter than Alice but still taller than Bob. That means this clearly signifies that Bob is shorter than Alice and we have to think about this situation again the whole cue in respect to putting Alice and Bob also in the situation so let's have Bob here and we know Bob is shorter than Alice so there are four students exactly in between so in between we don't need to worry about who they are there are four students over here now as we know in from here from the beginning there are 14 students who are behind Bob as we mentioned already there are 14 students behind Bob and now if we look at a current situation there is Bob there are four students here and there is Alice so there are five students already that means there should be nine students more behind Alice to make it 14 students after Bob yes that works and now Let's rub this out. All right. Now, let's have a look at Alice. So there were 12 students before Alice. Alice is here, and there are 12 students here. That includes Bob and these four students. Bob and these four students are five students. To make it 12 students before Alice, it should be seven students ahead of her. So that makes the whole queue. So there's seven students, then Bob, then four students in the middle, Alice, and then nine students behind. To find the total, you add up nine and four and seven, and you also have to include Bob and Alice. So that makes it add up nine, four, seven, and two more. And the answer is 22 students, and that is A. So there are 22 students in total. These questions are quite tricky, but if you draw them, draw them, try to understand them with the visual representation, it becomes quite easy. All right, let's have a look at question number 22. My sister and I are playing a game where she picks up two counting numbers and I have to guess them. When I tell her a number, she multiplies my number by her first number and then adds her second number. When I say 15, she says 50. When I say 2, she says 11. If I say 6, what should she say? Now, that is the second part. First, we have to understand. When I say 15, she says 50. When I say 2, she says 11. How is this happening? Let's lay it out and make a diagram for it. So, let's think about what is happening in this situation. So I'm telling her a number, she's multiplying by a number, and then she's adding her second number. So this is my number that I am giving to her, and there's another number that she's multiplying with, and then after multiplication, she is adding her second number to it, and then giving me the result. So when I'm, say, I'm telling her 
my number is 15 she obviously multiplies with something and adds something and gives me 50 so this is the first situation in the second situation I give her 2 she multiplies by the same number adds another number the same number as before and she tells me 11 All right, now let's work out what could be the possible scenario. Now for this situation, multiplication, she's multiplying something and adding something, and this has to remain same for both the situations. Now how many options are there for multiplication? Since in the first situation I'm giving her 15 and she's telling me 50, so actually there are only three possible situations, one, two, and three. If we go any above than three, if we put a 4, 15 times 4 is 60, which is way above 50. So that can't be the situation. Let's try to put 1. 15 times 1 is 15. But then she has to add a big number, 35, which would work in the second situation, but it will not work in the second, situa second case. So it cannot be 1. Let's try 2. 15 times 2 is 30. That means she has to add 20 more. Yes, it works in the first situation, but let's try the second situation. If she multiplies that by 2 and adds 20, that becomes 24, and that's not our answer. So obviously, 2 and 20 does not work. Now, there's only one answer uh, remaining, but let's try to work it out and see if it's possible. All right, so let's multiply by 3. 15 times 3 is 45 and then add 5 that gives us 50 yes it works but let's see if these two numbers work in the second scenario as well 3 and 5 so 2 multiplied by 3 is 6 and then you add 5 which gives us 11 yay these two number works in both the situations so let's now read the rest of the uh, question if I say 6 what should she say All right, I'm giving her 6. She multiplies it by 3, which is 18, and then she adds 5. I'm running out of space, and that gives us 23. So if I tell her 6, she will tell me 23. You see, you know, making a diagram out of it and working out different answers make it so simple. Question number 23. A year 6 student saved 100 cents in 5 days each day saving five cents more than the previous day how many cents did she save on the fifth day now this question is a tricky one uh, let's try to think because we know she's not saving the same amount each day these are the five days let's mark it so these are the five days she's saving and all together she saves hundred cents If she was saving same amount on each day, she would be ca working out 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 times 5 is 100. She would be saving 20 cents each day. But as as we know, she is not saving the equal amount. She is saving each day. She's saving five seconds, five cents more than the previous day. So 20 is our average. So we can let the last two and the first to go. We will remain. We will keep it in the middle, and just. According to the question, so the first previous day, of course, 5 less, 5 less, and after 20, it would be 25 and 30. Let's see if it works. Actually, it does. 30 and 10 makes 40, which was initially our 20 and 20 that did too. Let's check for 15 and 25. Yes, they add to 40, just like 20 and 20. And our addition is 20, so 40 plus 40 plus 20 is 100 cents, and that it works. And they go in increasing order of fives. So yes, the question, and oh, the answer, the answer doesn't stop here. The question is, how many cents she saves on the fifth day? That's the fifth day, she saves 30 cents. That's our answer. All right, question. This is a very interesting question and requires a lot of visualization. So um, if your visualization is really, really good, or I would suggest to you to actually take a cube, an eraser or anything, and try to write them on that cube and work it out. A cube has the letters A, M, C, D, E, F on its six faces. Two different views of the cube are shown. I place the cube on the table so that front shows C. If I look at the back of the cube, what will I see? So these are the two views of the same cube. Now, 
this is actually a very an uh, easier question in this category because they are just asking us what is in the back side of C. So we have to focus on C and thinking about what is on the back of C. So looking at the first view here, I have A, C and D. The here is C and I am looking at the opposite side of C. So that means the side which is hidden at the base. So the other side which is connected to A and D on the opposite side. This is the size we, side we are interested in, the face. So it's at the bottom. Now, I don't need to actually solve all of them. If I look, if I can find which side is adjoining A, that will be my face. Now, looking at the second view, I have my A over there. And I can see this is the face that I've, I'm interested in. It's opposite C. This is the face that I really, really want to find. And you can see that the face adjoining A is E. So F and D cannot be the answer. There are two possibilities, E and E. But the problem is the orientation. There are two different orientations. So we have to look closely at which orientation is the right one. Now, looking at our dice carefully, if you look at the orientation of A, can you see the two legs of A, the green dots? that corresponds with the longer side of E. That is how the orientation is. Now, coming back to look at the C, C is pointing to the top pointy bit of A, and then the E should be that way. But if we look at the other side, the E will be completely mirror image of that. So that will be this one and not be our answer is D. I would really suggest to make your visualization even more stronger. Take a dice, take an eraser, anything cube or cuboid, and try to write them down and see that it works. All right, this is question number 25, and this is a tricky question, a very interesting question, and you really have to actually work out the different possibilities to find the solution for this. Shirley has six pieces of her construction kit, two red, two blue, and two green. You can see in the diagram as well, she wants to build a square using four of the pieces. Yes, square need four pieces. Surely consider square one below to be the same as square two as it is turned over and rotated. Let's see. So we can see red, red in diagram one and there's two red in diagram two that's still connected at the same point it's just rotated and blue and green are side by side which is the same as actually diagram one it is just as they said turned over and rotated i can still see two reds are connected one red is connected to blue one red is connected to green and that's the same as the diagram one so these two diagrams actually are the same combination they will not be considered as two different combinations but if you look at two and three over, over here something has changed one red is connected to green and one red is connected to green and blue at the same time which is not the same situation in diagram two so this actually is a different combination this is r red green red blue whereas the before it was red red green blue so do you see diagram two and three are two different representations while diagram one and two are the same. So these are two different representations. How will she count? So our question, coming back to our question, so she has two reds, two blues, and two greens. How many different squares could she make out of these six different rows? So let's try to work them out. So I will use R for red, B for blue, G for green. Let's try to work them out. So the first combination can be, I can take both of the red and I can take two blues. That will be one combination. Yes, I can take two red and two greens. Uh, of course, I can leave, leave away the reds and I can just go with the greens and the blues. So two greens, two blues. But as we mentioned in the diagram that is shown in the example, there is another combination of this is possible if we change the alt if we alter the colors instead of putting red and red together, we can have red, blue, red, blue alternating colors. And that is a different combination. And similarly, red, green, red, green, another combination. Let's see the last one. There is another combination, green, blue, green, blue. 
yes so these are the combinations where we pick two rods of each color now of course we have to find more which combinations can be more it can be that two rods are of the same color and the other two rods come of two different colors so red red I can pick one green and one blue two reds and one blue one green or it can be two blue and one green and one red of course and it can be two greens one blue and one red now are there different combinations possible for this yes there are now as you can see two reds are connected together and as shown in the diagram in the question itself there is a different combination possible red blue red green yes that is different and just similarly for the next one it can be blue red blue green that's entirely a different combination green red green blue and if you look closely if you try to work out any more combinations they do not work these are all the possible combinations that are possible others will be just rotations or mirror images or reflections of these combinations so these are all the combinations that are possible let's count them up three 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 four groups of threes and they are six nine and twelve so there are twelve different combinations possible and these are all the different squares that surely can make using the six sticks provided so twelve is our answer uh, right so now uh, for question number 26 to 30 let's mo move over to our next video the link is provided here all right see you bye bye